everyone welcome back to another session in dentistry mo so today we have a discussion about the abutment in fpd so what are the criteria we need to look into when selecting an abutment so as per gpt the abutment uh, can be defined as a tooth or a portion of a tooth or that portion of an implant which is used for the support of a fixed or removable processes so this uh, abutment role is very crucial in uh, accepting the load of fpd because uh, if something happens to the abutment if it is not able to withstand the uh, occlusal force the fpd will be failed so now there are many factors which uh, determines the failure of an fpd with regard to abutment so we have some five to six major factors or major criteria as for to select an abutment the first one is the location position and condition of the tooth so the characteristics of the preferred abutment that are teeth adjacent to edentulous spaces and teeth with grossly decayed crowns that can be restored with a full veneer crown then modifications like double core or pin retained amalgam restorations they needed to restore crown morphology in grossly destructed teeth vital teeth are preferred though endodontic teeth can be used pulp cap teeth cannot be used as they are always under risk of rct so these teeth can be uh, selected for an abutment in fpd that are the teeth which is near to the edentulous space teeth with grossly decayed decades crowns that can be restored with a full veneer crown or uh, double core or pin retained amalgam restorations which can be needed to restore crown morphology in grossly destructed teeth mostly vital teeth are preferred still we can go for teeth with uh, root canal therapy but never use a tooth uh, with pulp capped because uh, they are always under the risk of root canal treatment next factor is crown root ratio so it is the ratio between the length of the crown and length of the root okay and it should always be less than 1 that is the length of the root should be greater than the length of the crown okay so the length of the crown indicates the length of the tooth structure above the crest of the alveolar bone you can see the picture here so ideally the crown ratio should be 2 as to 3 is so, a length of the crown 2 length of the root is 3 but ratio up to 1 is to 1 that is the equal length of crown and root is acceptable so that is crown root ratio next is root configuration in root configuration the forces acting on tooth are transported to supporting bone through the root that is how it happens so the shape of the root determines the ability of the abutment to transfer these masticatory forces to the supporting bone so roots with greater labiolingual width are preferred or roots with irregular curvature are preferred rather than the straight one because it can withstand more forces in more directions that is oblique directional force and apical i mean the forces which is acting through the uh, long axis of tooth so always curved roots or the roots with more labio lingual or the bucco lingual uh, with this preferred or teeth with longer roots serve as better abutment rather than the shorter roots so canines is a better abutment rather than the lateral incisor and tooth with conical roots can be used for short span fixed partial denture so that was about root configuration now we have the root support the fourth one is root support in root support the supporting alveolar bone should be healthy without any peri apical or periodontal problems so it should have a good trabecular architecture and no uh, it should not show any sign of bone defects or bone loss so the iopa should be used to evaluate the bone 
architecture before we are planning it as an abutment so this alveolar bone support is one of the most important factors that aid to evaluate an abutment and next we have the periodontal ligament area so it can be used as a measure of scale to determine the potency of the abutment so there is something known as antis law antis law so antis law uh, before that there was Tillman who stated that two abutment teeth could support two pontics okay so this came before anti so Tillman stated two abutment teeth two abutment teeth could support two pontics but later anti put forward this law he says that the sum of the perisemental areas of the abutment teeth should be equal to or greater than the tooth to be replaced So it is the sum of the peri cemental area of the abutment teeth. Okay, so if you are replacing three teeth, and the peri cemental area of these three teeth, what we are planning for the abutment should be greater. So this law is simple. We need more peri cemental area for the abutment teeth than the teeth to be replaced. so the periodontal area of abutment should be calculated and if it is not sufficient if it is not reaching uh, with respect to the teeth to be replaced we need to take additional support as secondary abutment so we need to have more perisemental area for the abutment than the teeth to be replaced that is antis law and lastly the assessment of palpal health so usually uh, unrestored abutments are preferred rather than endodontically treated or palpal uh, inflamed which went for any restoration uh, such tooth uh, should be avoided so if caries is present the regular preparation can be done if the caries lesions are large they should be scooped out and can be used for additional retention rather than the primary retention and if the abutment tooth has a caries lesion with palpal involvement Uh, where the RCD is advised, such abutment should be avoided. So that was all about the abutment selection in fixed partial denture, or the criteria we need to think about before planning abutment in FPD. That are the location, position of the condition of the tooth, where to be placed, what tooth to be kept as abutment. then the crown root ratio ideally it is 2 is to 1 that is the root should be more lengthier than the crown that is ideally 2 is to, uh, optimal one uh, is 1 is to 1 or ideally it is 2 is to 3 that is a more root length then the root configuration the curved roots and the longer roots are preferred then the root support we need to take an iop and make sure that there is no periapical or periodontal problems then the periodontal ligamental area the perisemental area of the abutment should be greater than the teeth to be replaced and finally the assessment of palpal health a tooth without any palpal issues should be selected for an abutment so it is small concept but usually questions uh, came as a short notes the one is crown root ratio then the antis law sometimes criteria of abutment selection nfpd i'll come up with a new topic in prosthodontics thank you